Hello, hello. Welcome to Spindle TV. My name is Laney Shaughnessy. I'll be your host tonight. Sorry I haven't been around for the last two classes. Uh, I've been up north in Indiana. We had a annual user group meeting in Martinsville, Indiana. So uh, we are, um, uh, I was up there and I do not know how uh, my latency, I have just normal latency and everything on there. So normally I try to lower that so there's a little bit more interaction and everything between us. Uh, but uh, I wasn't paying attention when I started the stream. So hopefully you're all doing well tonight and uh, thanks for joining me. Um, let's see here. James Baker, the videos are automatically saved to the Spindle TV YouTube channel. You can watch from there anytime. You can come and uh, come to Spindle TV on YouTube and watch the videos anytime you want. They're there uh, after the class. They're, they're there. Um, all right. So, last couple of weeks we've been laying out some kind of... Uh, different uh, items for my home gym. Uh, we've been doing some French cleat uh, hanging accessories and uh, some other items and stuff. Well, every good gym needs some motivational signs, right? So I want some signage around the place uh, on the walls and stuff everywhere you look, including the gym sign itself, right? So we're gonna make some signs. We're gonna do some stack text. We're gonna do some raised letter signs. We're gonna do some texturing. So we're just going to make some signs. Uh, so we're gonna have a lot of good techniques in here and basics and stuff for every one of you that wanna learn how to just make some signs. This will be a good class for you. So uh, join me for that. Here we go. <laughs> Hang on to your hats. Here we go. Um, but uh, we are going to I thought it was getting a little dry we are going to uh, uh, lay out a bunch of few fun ones and stuff so hopefully you'll get something out of it all right before we get started let's go ahead and uh, make sure everybody can see me and hear me and all that good stuff let's get this up out of the way all right um, Hopefully the audio is good. Let me know if I need to turn my microphone up because I just last minute, within the last five minutes, set the cameras and microphones and, and lighting back up because I took them up north with me to the um, uh, to the user group meeting and everything. So just make sure that I set it back up correctly, right? So let me know if everybody can hear me. All right, let's go ahead and jump over to, I believe I am on channel three with my screen on my computer so let's jump into that uh, camera number three there we go and let's throw me down in the bottom left corner awesome cool beans all right so the um, first thing that we're going to do is I want to start off with some stacked text or commonly for me it's commonly referred to as text on text so I want to make a nice uh, gym sign for myself kind of uh, like the business sign if you will it's not really a business but you know uh, my fitness center sign and um, so we're gonna do some stack text for that and we're gonna have a uh, uh, good old time with that one all right so um, Let's see here. Brooks, you're everywhere. <laughs> I guess y'all are running into each other on other live streams and stuff. All right. So here's what we've got to start out with. Uh, we are working in Vetric VCar Pro. Everything that I'm going to be doing tonight can be done in Desktop, Pro, or Aspire, no matter which one you have. So that's going to be the key, or that's going to be key. Um, the first sign that I'm going to make. Uh, is going to be the main uh, sign for the facility. It's going to be 24 inches in width along my x-axis. Axis. 
It's going to be 16 inches in height and it's going to be three quarter inches thick. Uh, I will be zeroing out on the material surface for the Z0 position and I will be starting in the bottom left corner for my XY datum, the XY0 position, my start position in the bottom left corner of the material. Uh, here, that's where we're going to start. All right, uh, got my resolution set to very high. We're gonna click OK, and now we are ready to rock and roll. All right, the first thing I wanna do is I'm going to create a rectangular border. Um, I would like this border's anchor point, of course, to be in the center of my board, so I'm gonna hit the letter W, and I'm gonna divide that by two, and hit equals, and that's gonna give me the center of my uh, 20, four inch wide board. I'm gonna hit the letter H and divide that by two and that's gonna give me the center of the height of my board, hit the equal sign. And I would like my border to be about one inch in all the way around so I want a nice frame around my sign. So I'm gonna go W which is the width and I'm gonna minus two inches from that, one inch from each side. Hit equals and the height, I'm going to type in the letter H. We could use the letter H or Y for our height or with our width earlier, we could do W or the letter X. Either way, the software knows the calculation box, but this is our height. I'm going to subtract two inches from that, one inch from both sides and hit equals. And then I'm going to create that border. Okay, cool. Now, I'd like to have um, on my border I'd like to have a little bit of an internal radius on the corner. I think I'm gonna go with a one inch radius. Let's go ahead and bring that up there. Okay, cool beans. All right, calculation edit boxes. So any box in the software where you can type in a value, you can use those variables, W or X for the width of your board or your X axis, height, H or Y, and T or Z for the thickness of your material, so on and so forth. Uh, you'll find more information about the calculation edit boxes under the help menu and the key help contents, which is the manual, okay, under the user interface. All right, so we've got our border now. And uh, now I'd like to create my text. So first things first, before I get started, I want to create my layers because this is going to be my text on text, my stacked text, however you want to say it. It's up to you. It's all good. But I'm going to create uh, my stacked text sign. And so with every stacked text sign, we need our layers. So this layer here, I'm going to call it my original layer. I'm going to rename this to the original layer. That's what I'm drawing this design on. Now, by default, When you start a job, you're gonna have layer one, right? Rename layer one, layer one to your original layer. For me, I've got four layers in here because I've got other stuff hiding in the background uh, for this class. So my original layer is gonna be down here, all right? I'm gonna create a new layer from there. I'm gonna call this my top text layer. Top text layer. I'm gonna create my third layer, which is gonna be my bottom text layer layer all right Let's see if we can get back out of the buffering stage here all right guys yeah that new setup every time I always have to go through it uh, and it was a little bit last minute so uh, we might get some buffering tonight um, the way things are streaming it uh it is what it is we just have to kind of work with it all right so um let's see here more than one is using the primary url let's see here error more than one ingestion is using the primary url send one stream to the primary one stream to the back uh I have no idea what that means, but okay. All right, so for my gem, uh, we're gonna call this uh, 
Let's see here. What are we going to call my gym? Let's see. Can't be Laney's gym, right? Uh, we could go... Uh, we'll make up something. Call it Total Force Fitness. Yeah. All right. We'll do that. Let's see here. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't named it yet. I haven't come up with anything yet. Let's see here. Let's go with... For the text, I'd like something uh, straightforward. Uh, I'm going to go all caps. Um, we're going to go fitness. And I want this to be about, let's see here. Let's go five inches tall. All right, cool beans. And let's change up the text just a little bit. Okay. All right, I'm going to stretch this text up a little. There we go. And uh, on the text here, I'd like it to have a curve in the bottom of it. Not the top, not the whole thing, but just I want the bottom being arched up. I want a nice curve in there. Uh, so I'm going to distort my text. And I'm going to put it inside of a bounding box and I'm going to click apply. And that's going to basically stick that text inside of a box. And however I stretch that box, my text will contort to that. Uh, so what I'd like to do is on this bottom line here, I'd like to turn that to an arc. And I'd like to pull that up. So it has a bit of an arc to it. And I'm gonna bring this up a little bit taller here. There we go. So it just has a nice little arch to it. Okay. All right. And uh, we're going to put in our top text now. So this is gonna be one inch, 1.5 inches tall. And let's see here, for this I'm going to use What font am I going to use? Bear with me a second, let's see here. want something that's got a little bit of style. Let me see here. That's cool. We'll deal with that. All right, we're going to stretch that up a little bit. Okay, that'll work. And now I'm going to make a progress bar, right? You ever seen those progress bars on the computer? You know, like loading, uh, whatever, you know? Uh, so I'm going to draw a rectangle. Okay, I'm going to draw a rectangle. I want square corners on it. All right, I'm going to draw another rectangle in here. And let's see, on this one, I'd like it, uh, let's make it at least uh, somewhat the same size. So let's go one, 
Um, let's go one and a quarter by one and a quarter. So square, there we go. Let's get it centered inside this rectangle. Oops, hold on, where'd you go? All right, get it centered inside that rectangle. Now I'm gonna go into node editing mode and I'm gonna grab these two nodes right here and I'm gonna use my right arrow key on my keyboard and I'm gonna shift them forward just a little bit to give that uh, uh, basically uh, like a parallelogram, right? Cool. All right, so let's go about right there. Looks good. All right, now I'm going to take that parallelogram there, and I'm going to copy it multiple times over. So I'm going to hold the control key down, and I'm going to copy it. I'm just dragging out copies. Okay, lots and lots of copies. I don't care what order they're in. I don't care if they're in alignment. I don't care anything. I just want to get them on the board, okay? Uh, and the more that I put in here, the tighter the space will be between these when it lays them all out and everything. And I think uh, that'll be good for right now. Now what I want to do is I want to select all of them. Okay, I want to select all of them. And then I'm going to select my rectangle last. I'm going to go into my alignment tool and I'm going to align to that last selection, that rectangle, and I'm going to align them all to the center. So that will stack all of them right in the center. And then I'm going to space them inside that last selection horizontally. So that will space them. All right. Cool. And that's a decent amount of spacing. If I want, if I want the spacing in here to be tighter, uh, then I would add more of these parallelogram, more more squares, right? Uh, and I think that looks fine. So what I want to do is, <clears throat> with that, I'm going to shift them over just a little bit, right there. All right, cool beans, about like that. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this outer rectangle here and I need, a, I need a duplicate because I need to be able to use this rectangle to trim to, but I don't wanna like actually delete it. So I need a copy of it. So I'm going to control C as the shortcut for copy, but we'll just do it up here in the menu. On the left-hand side, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna hit copy, okay? And then I'm gonna, now that I've copied that rectangle, it's copied right where it's at. So now I can use it for something else. I'm not gonna paste it yet, just gonna copy there. So I've got it copied, it's in the memory. Now I'm gonna take my scissors and I want to trim this other rectangle away, okay? And I just wanted to trim, it was just for this one to trim that. Now I'm gonna come back and hit paste to put that rectangle back, okay? So it looks like this one is kind of hidden back in the back there. Wonderful. All right, uh, I'm gonna bump it over just a little bit. Probably right about there is good. And then I'm gonna get rid of, let's get rid of these four right here. Okay, and that line. All right, so now it looks like the progress bar you know, uh, the little doot, 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 you know, going across there and everything. I'm going to add some text in here. Uh, for the text, I'm going to choose uh, OCR extended here, and I'll go maybe one inch tall in the text. And I'm going to type in all capital letters. I'm going to type in transformation in progress dot 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 wonderful <clears throat> let's make that uh, 0.75 inches tall 
All right, we're going to get centered left to right. We're going to take this bad boy here and we're going to um, we're going to make it just a little bit bigger about like that. And I want to add one more rectangle on the outside, so I'm going to do an offset. I'm going to offset outward. I'm going to go an eighth of an inch. That's fine. And I want square corners just to create an additional line right there. Okay. Um, transformation progress. I'm going to squeeze that in a little bit. I'd like it to be about the same size as the box. Good. And let's just make sure everything is aligned centered. So we're going to go left to right. Click on this one, left to right. And let's take our total force fitness up here and go left to right. Now, this progress bar here, this progress bar and everything, this is the lower third. It's not part of the stack text on text, so it's the lower third, right? You know, anything that's kind of outside of there. Now, I do want to lower this down. I want to come down to right about here with this. I want to take this and I do want to raise it up there. Right about there is good. All right, I do want to make sure, let me make sure that I am centered left to right. With that, it looks it is. No, nope, that's what I thought. I knew, I knew one of them was off. All right, <clears throat> there we go. Now I do want to add one more element right here, but I don't know, it might look weird because there's not a whole lot of space there. Um, but, uh, I was thinking about a, maybe like a dumbbell or something, you know, uh, and we'll, um, uh, you know, I was thinking maybe like a dumbbell or like, um, something we'll go with a dumbbell. All right. So here's what we're going to do. So I'm going to take a rectangle tool. And I'm going to draw a rectangle right there. I'm going to take another rectangle, draw it here. All right, I'm going to take this rectangle and I'm going to copy it over three times. So I'm going to go one. Well, it would help if I held the control key and not the shift key. So let's try that one more time. Uh, hold that control key to make a copy. So there's one, two, three. Uh, let's go four. Go four. All right, I'm going to select all four of these right here, and I'm going to use the alignment tool to align them up and down with one another so they're all the same height here. Okay. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to hold the shift key down, and I'm going to lower it down just a little bit smaller. The next one, hold the shift key down and lower it down a little bit smaller. That way it does both sides. The next one. Lower it down a little bit smaller. Okay. And I want one more rectangle the size of this. So I'm going to hold down my uh, control key and drag a copy of this barbell over. And I'm actually going to, I got to go to the other side and shorten it up. I just want a rectangle. It's going to represent the end of the barbell and let's stick that there now 
Once again, I want to align all of these centers, so up and down, make sure they're all centered with one another. But as a group, I want them all centered with this bar, right? The bar bell on this side. So I want to select all five of these shapes first on the left, hold down the shift key, select the dumbbell bar last, if you will. And I want to use up and down, make sure they're all centered with that bar, okay? And then I would like a little bit of space in between these. Uh, you know, pretty much a little bit of space like this. So I'm going to select all these and I want to be consistent with my spacing. So I'm going to bump them all up against the barbell and all at once, I'm just going to start moving myself over. So with all five of these selected, I'm going to use the move tool. I'm going to use the move tool and I'm going to move relative to its current position to the left, so it's gonna be a negative number. I'm gonna go negative 125, 0.125, eighth of an inch, shift that over, that's too much. Uh, let's go, let's go a 16th. Uh, so negative 0 0.0625, click apply. Let me see, at a grand scheme of things, that looks good. All right, now I'm gonna hold the shift key down and turn off this one, this bar, this weight, right? Now with these selected, I'm gonna move over, negative 0 0.0625, hit apply, turn this one off, and I'm just working my way across with a 16th of an inch spacing in between each one, turning off one, so while I move the others, negative to go to the right, or to the left, sorry, um, and then finally, this last one here will put an actual, uh, we'll go a little bit smaller with the spacing on this. So I'm actually gonna just go a 30 second, negative 0 0.03125, oops. Just go a little bit spacing, okay? All right, so that's got one side here. Now I need the other side. So I'm gonna take a draw a line, okay? I'm gonna draw a line and I'm going to find the center of my bar, which is right here. And I'm going to draw a line right along the center there. I can make the line bigger if you want, right? So it doesn't matter. I just want a line to represent the center. Can you all see that? Good. All right, I'm going to select all of these first. Hold down the shift key, select that line last, and use the mirror tool, and I'm going to flip them about the line flip about the line to put them on the other side. So I wasn't quite center of that rectangle, so let me undo that. I was actually probably center on my board, but not the rectangle. Let me get centered on my rectangle. Let me find the center. All right, I'll find the center this way, there we go. Ah, don't move that. Okay, let me get center. There we go. All right, let's try that again. Okay. Select those. Select the line last and flip about the line. Perfect. There we go. All right, get rid of that line. Now I've got a little dumbbell there, but now I want to offset. I want to do an offset around this, like at a border around all of those. So I'm gonna select all of them. I'm gonna offset using the offset tool. Outward, I'm gonna go an eighth of an inch, like that. Let me look at it really well. Um, bah, 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 bah. Let's go a sixteenth of an inch. So I did control Z to undo and we're gonna do just a 16th of an inch. All right, so the goal is to make sure that is centered left to right, use the alignment tool, center it on the board, and that is gonna be my sign, okay, right? So, um, and uh, 
Right, we could, yeah, so uh, there's a good idea, Todd. Todd's like, put the uh, weights at the end of the progress bar, right? Uh, you know, um, that would be a cool, uh, that could be a cool, um, that could be a cool design element. Let me think here, that could be a cool design element. Yeah. Give me a second. I'm see here I good idea but I'm gonna leave it out on this one uh, but good idea Todd that maybe maybe for another a different one uh, we're gonna make we're gonna make more than one tonight so, uh, but uh, good idea, but I'm gonna just leave it as it is. All right, so I've got my lower thirds here. So these items right here that are pink, those are the lower thirds. Uh, the Anything that's not part of the stack text on text, so just keep that in mind. Now I've got to separate, this is my original design here. I've gotta separate this into the layers, okay? So we're gonna take the fitness, the word fitness here, and we're going to, first of all, right click and convert it to curves, which means it breaks it out of that transformation, that distortion box. Uh, and we're going to group it together. And I'm gonna right click and I'm going to copy that to the bottom text layer, okay? Total force, we're going to copy that to the layer. It's gonna be the top text layer. The dumbbell and progress bar and everything is going to be, or the barbell and uh, progress bar is gonna be copied to the lower third layer. And then I need a border, my border. I wanna copy that to the top text layer and to the welded text layer. That's the only two places I want the border. All right, so now with that, I can turn off the original design, <clears throat> turn off all my other layers, and I should have a border and the top text on the top text layer, the bottom text on the bottom text layer, nothing but the border on the welded text layer as of right now, and then the lower third layer should be the, uh, let's go ahead and get rid of that. Just the barbell and everything. Um, so let's, uh, this actually gets moved. Move that to the original layer. Okay. All right. So just this on the lower third. All right. <clears throat> Now that everything is separated nicely, we're gonna go ahead and we'll start off with our top text layer. The top text layer, if any of my top text needs to be cleaned up, now's the time to do it. If I need to, um, you know, if, I, if it's script of something and I have letters and lines overlapping and I need to trim and get rid of those overlaps or weld things together, now's the time to do it. Uh, the text is fairly clean. So I am going to just copy that over to the welded text layer, okay? I don't need to do anything with it. I'm just gonna put it on the welded text layer. It's ready to go. Now, I need to determine right here and now how tall I want my letters to be for my stack text. And for me, a really good looking sign is a total cut of a quarter of an inch 
with a one inch tall top text and a one inch tall bottom text uh, on that stack text for a total cut of one uh, quarter of an inch. I like that, it's a nice looking depth for me for a sign, you might wanna go deeper, totally up to you, but uh, I'm going to do that. Now knowing two things, knowing that I'm using a 60 degree V-bit and knowing uh, that I want my text to be an eighth of an inch tall, those two things will help me determine what my offset is for my letters and my borders for this sign. I have to do an offset and I need to know what that value is. So how we determine what that value is, is we're going to, um, I'm just gonna call this layer offset. I'm making a new layer called offset just to write on. But I'm gonna draw a 60 degree V-bit And I'm gonna draw a line at the tip of that bit coming straight out. And this represents my bit sitting on the top of my board, okay? Now if I take that line and I move that line relative to its position, if I move it up an eighth of an inch, <clears throat> then the distance from the tip of the bit to that intersection where the eighth of an inch, where that bit is cutting into the material by an eighth of an inch, that distance, that offset distance horizontally is, is the offset that I need. So if I measure that distance from here to here, my number is always gonna be 0 0.0722. That's kind of the offset for an eighth inch uh, cut depth with a 60 degree V bit. Um, and that number would vary based on if I'm using a 90 degree V bit, 22 degree V bit, whatever. You would just basically kind of draw out your bit and deter and you know your line and move it around, get your offset. Okay. So for me, the tip to the intersection of my eighth inch tall letters, 0.0722 is my magic number. All right, let's go ahead and turn that layer off. Okay, and so what I need to do before I leave my top text layer is my border that's on there, I need to offset that inward, inward by that offset amount. So I'm gonna offset inward 0 0.0722. I want uh, no square corners on this. I wanna delete the original that's on this layer and select the new. Now I just want to bring it in that little bit. Done. This layer is complete. I'm finished with it. I can now move on. The welded text layer, that top text that I copied over, I need to offset that text outward by my offset number. So I'm going to offset outward by 0.0722, delete the original, click offset, and I'm gonna undo that because when you're working, make sure you're in the layer and make sure that layer is active that you're working in. So I want my welded text layer active before I do that, and let's try that again. Okay, wonderful. Now I need to group those vectors together group them together, okay? So that's done. So the last thing I need to do now is my bottom text layer. That does nothing. The layer, this layer is only used to house the bottom text. The only thing I need to do on here is I'm going to uh, come in and copy that down to the welded text layer. And I've got this group of vectors here. And if I ungroup them, you can see it's, you know, they're, uh, let's turn those layers off there. Uh, I got this group of vectors and I've got the top text group of vectors. 
those two groups are going to get welded together. We're going to use the weld tool and weld them together. Okay, that's why it's called the welded text layer. All right, cool. All right, now that takes care of my stacked text, the things that I need to do with it. Now I need to put some vectors on my top text layer and my welded text layer because those are the two layers that I'm going to be using mostly. But I got to protect the wood that's down here in the lower third where this barbell and progress bar and text is going to be. So what I'm going to do is in my lower third layer here, I'm going to take this outside boundary right here and I'm going to offset it outward an eighth of an inch. And I'm also going to offset it outward a little bit further a second time, two times. I'm going to take that, that border there. Um, not the one that I offset, the outside original border, and I'm gonna go 0.15 and offset that. So that should give me with two little offsets out here that I can use. All right, we're gonna do the same thing with the progress bar here and the text. I'm gonna do them both together, <clears throat> might as well. So we're gonna offset outward an eighth of an inch And then I'm going to come back and select that boundary again and that text again. And then I'm going to go 0.15. Okay. All right. Now, these two boundaries that I created here and these boundaries that I created here around the progress bar and the boundaries that I created around the text. Make sure everything is selected around the text. Get all of the boundaries from around the text. Just the outside boundaries. I don't care about any of the other crap that's in here. We're going to be deleting that in just a moment. Just those little offsets that we created, the two offsets. Okay, make sure everything that's around the letters is all selected. And we're going to copy this to two different places. We're gonna copy it to the top text layer. Okay, I should have grouped that together so I don't have to go select it again. That's all right, we'll do it again. We're gonna take this, that, Select just those outside borders. Just the outside borders, our offsets that we created. Don't worry about any of this inside stuff that was created during that offset process. That's gonna get deleted. We're, gonna, we're not gonna use those. All we care about are the two outside borders that we created. And we're gonna copy that down to the welded text layer. What that's going to do is that's going to, when we carve our stack text, um, that's going to give me these boundaries and all. It's going to protect that wood from getting carved away uh, when we're doing our top text and we're doing our bottom text carving. You know, we're going to be carving around and we're going to be removing all the material from within this border and around all the letters and everything. Well, we need that wood to stay there so we can do that lower third text. And so we got to protect it. So that's all we're doing. We're protecting that material. All right, cool. Now I want to clean up my lower third layer here. And by clean up, what I mean is, is all of these things in here that were created during the offset process, all of this stuff here that were created during the offset process, all these little offsets, I want to get rid of them. Okay, I just don't want them in the design. So all these little things don't belong. And basically, if they're not part of your text and they're not the two outside borders, they go. Okay, if they're not part of the original wording, 
And they're not the two outside borders. They don't belong. Okay. All right. Good. So now that I've cleaned all that up, I'm ready to create some tool paths. So here we go. Let's go ahead and turn off the lower third layer for right now and just turn on the top text layer and the welded text layer. Those are the two layers that need to be turned on at this moment. Okay, got a bit of a problem right here. Okay, uh, my offsets when my router bit comes and cuts that dumbbell and all that stuff, it's gonna run into my text right there. Okay, and uh, I don't want that to occur. So I've got to take a minute and step back. So let me step back and I just need to shift some things upward. Uh, bear with me just a second. Okay, I want to delete this for a minute. Deleting the welded stuff because I got to move some things up. I want to take my top text and my bottom text. I want to move them up slightly. Give myself a little bit of room, a little bit of clearance. I thought I'd ever had everything sized well, I'm good with that. All right, one more time. Let me take my bottom text. Let's turn these off so it doesn't confuse you. My bottom text and copy that down to the welded text layer. Okay. Take my top text, total force, copy that to the welded text layer. On the welded text layer, I'm gonna take the word total force, offset it outward by 0.0722. I'm going to group it together and then I'm going to weld those two texts back together again. Okay, so I'm clear there now. That's good. All right, let's go back to where we were. So here we are. Just had to step back and kind of move some things up a little bit. All right, so tool pass. Let's get rid of all these tool pass here. First tool path is going to be a V-carved tool path starting at zero, cutting an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna be using a 60 degree V-bit. I'm gonna be raster cutting and I'm going to be using an eighth inch and a quarter inch end mill. Those are gonna be my two clearance bits. I'm gonna do a raster cut and we're going to call this top text. Down here at the very bottom where it says vector selection order or vector selection. I'm going to hit the selector and I want all of my open and close vectors associated with this tool path. And I want all of them that are on the top text layer to be associated with the top text tool path that I'm creating right here. So if you notice all the vectors that are currently on the top text layer, they're going to be lit up in pink. It's going to automatically select them for me. So it'll see the selection will be automatic. And I'm going to calculate that toolpath. We're going to continue. Okay. We're going to preview that visible toolpath. Okay, now I'm a goofball. Only one border. 
All right, let's go. Let's step back for a second. On my top text layer, I only need the inside boundary. I don't need both of them on the layers. I need them on the third layer, but uh, this offset out here, I need that turned off or deleted, deleted. And this one I need deleted. And the outside one, those offsets, I only need the one, the first one. There's two of them. One that was offset an eighth of an inch, one that was offset 0.15. The eighth of an inch is all I need on layers, the top text layer and the welded text layer. So get rid of that outside one. I don't know why, what made me think to put both of them on there. Just the outside one. Same thing on the welded text layer. Go in there and get rid of that outside offset. We don't use that except for in when we do the actual carving of that lower third. That gets that's our clearance vector. Okay. Okay. I'm missing uh, on transformation. I'm missing the ION. So I'm going to go down to my lower third layer here. And I need this vector right here. Uh, I need to copy it to that welded text layer. Let's make sure I got it on there. Okay. There we go. All right, transformation in progress. Okay, good. Sorry, a little bit of a mess up. I had too many boundaries, okay? I didn't need all of those. All right, one more time, Laney. Here we go. Turn on the top text layer. Turn on the welded text layer boundary. Okay, top text, welded text. Give me just a second. Cleaning up my mess. Cleaning up my mess. Everybody's got a mess. All right. Let's see here. Okay. This, we got to move it over to the welded text layer. Okay. Cleaned up my mess. Now we can go back to where we were. Wonderful. Let's create some tool paths again. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go ahead and calculate that tool path once again. That was terrible. Terrible. All right. Preview that visible tool path. And what I should have now, I could tell that there was a problem when it removed all that wood that we're trying to protect. I should have all this wood still untouched. Let me turn off the color here. I should have all this wood untouched, right? Uh, so that's where my barbell and all is gonna carve and stuff. So it should still be there, shouldn't be carved away. All right, so with that done, let's create the second tool path. Lord have mercy, Laney Shaughnessy, let's go. All right, second tool path is gonna start at an eighth of an inch. It's gonna cut down another eighth of an inch using the same 60 degree V-bit and the two clearance tools. This is gonna be called my bottom text. And it's going to be associated in the vector selection area, the selector button here. I want the open and close vectors associated with this toolpath and everything on the welded text layer. I want to associate with that and calculate. Ooh, what a mercy. Preview the visible toolpath. All 
All right, so there is my stacked text for the top area. Now I need to focus my tool pass on the lower area here. So for the lower area, we're gonna turn off our two layers and we're going to create a, we're gonna select just the inside offset for our progress bar, our dumbbell, and our text. Make sure you just, that inside offset. One, three more. One, two, three. And we're gonna create a pocket cut. This pocket cut is gonna start at zero, cut down an eighth of an inch. We're gonna use a quarter inch end mill. Offset is fine for the cut. And this is gonna be my lower third pocket. And I'm gonna calculate that tool path. What that's gonna do is that's gonna remove that material uh, to bring it down to where it's only an eighth of an inch tall, okay? All right, and then the final cut, final tool path, is gonna use the outside boundaries this time. The outside boundary. I'm gonna hold the shift key down and select all the outside boundaries. Make sure that all of the boundaries are selected and the inside actual items this time. So my three periods, one, two, three, with the text, okay, I want that selected. My progress bar, my actual progress bar, which are gonna be these squares here and these two vectors there and then my dumbbells, so these vectors here, okay? Wonderful. All right, we're gonna create our tool path. This is gonna be a V-card tool path. It's gonna be starting at an eighth of an inch. It's gonna be cutting an eighth of an inch. For this, I'm not going to use the quarter inch end mill. I'm just strictly going to use the eighth inch end mill for the clearance tool along with my 60 degree V-bit. I am going to uh, do this as a raster cut uh, for the um, tool specific options. And I'm just gonna call this my lower third V-carve, just what I name it. And I'm going to calculate that tool path. And I think I like the way that looks. I might want to take one of the offsets away from the barbell. We'll find out here in just a second. Uh, as far as the uh, one of the lines that goes around it, I might want to change that up, but let's take and preview that. Visible toolpath. Okay. I do not want the dar the, the barbells carving this way. I want it, I want it uh, different. I want it reversed, if you will. So I'm going, I am going to open that toolpath back up and I am going to take away this line right here. I don't want that in there. So when I calculate that tool path, we're gonna change up the progress bar as well too. Uh, let's reset the preview and preview all the tool paths so you can see what I'm referring to. Okay. 
There's the quarter inch lower text and the pocket cut Okay, so I want the barbell carving like it is here, but I do not want this outside line. That line has to be cleared away, okay? So that's gonna be my, um, my offset allowance, if you will. Uh, I need that to be uh, removed and everything. And so when that bit is cutting you know, between here, and all, um, it's leaving that material that's out here that uh, should have been, you know, uh, cleared away, and it's leaving this trim line around the letters. You can see the letters and everything here. It's leaving that trim line around uh, the letters and everything because that material uh, wasn't removed and it needs to be. So my vector selections, I wanna make sure that um, everything is, let's go back in here. Okay, and that is the, that's the problem, let's see here. So this is gonna carve there, skip there. Looking at this, I want the progress bar going exactly like it is here. I want it looking exactly like that. I need to change up the lower third pocket is removing all of that, that's good. My selections are right, let's see here. Man, that's, that's exactly what I want. Give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, there's an extra boundary in my selections, I can tell. All right, so let's go back and look at our vector, our layers and make sure everything is nice and clean because I screwed up earlier. So let's see, make sure that everything's clean. I should have one border on my top text layer and it should be offset inward. There we go, yep. All right, one border on my top text layer. I should have one text, one boundary. Make sure that boundary is single and make sure that is single. Okay, the problem with this is, if I turn on, I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna have that selected when I turn on the lower third layer, and that's the right vector. That is the right vector. Okay, so those are all, that's all my correct vectors. So that one's good. Turn off, turn on the welded text layer. Total fitness, total force fitness is good. That's a single vector, that's good. And it is the boundary that I want. All right, now that should come out. That should come out the way I want it to. Let's take a look again. 
Come on, we gotta move on. I hate when I screw up. When I screw up everything, it seems like everything goes downhill from there when you make one mistake. All right, so quarter inch end mill, clearing. Eighth inch end mill, clearing. V carve, clear. Okay, so far that is fine. Nothing wrong with that. Bottom text. That looks great. Quarter inch end mill, eighth inch end mill, V-bit. It's perfect. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. Right there is a problem. That straight lip, that's a collision. So I need to look and see why that's colliding. Let's go into the bottom text layer. Starting at an eighth of an inch, cutting down another eighth of an inch. That's good. No problem there. That's all perfect. Nothing is getting projected. That's perfect. That is a collision. That's the shank colliding. Come on, man. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lower third stuff and I'm going to delete it off the top text layer and the welded text layer. I'm going to redo that really quickly. All right, one more time on my lower third layer. Okay, this barbell is what I want. And right now, I'm going to get rid of this. Okay, that barbell is what I want right there. So I'm going to do my offsets again really quickly. So first time it gets offset outward an eighth of an inch, 0.125. Okay. Then I'm going to offset outward again. Point one five. Okay. My inside vector Let me think here for a minute. Yep. My inside vector is going to get copied over to the top text layer for the, the dumbbell. There we go. All right, progress bar. Going to get rid of those offsets. I'm going to redo these really quickly. Hate when I screw up. Okay. All right, so this is the progress bar I want. When I carve this, I'm just gonna carve it just to show you what I want it to look like. Uh, I'm just gonna go zero uh, to an eighth of an inch and calculate this. <clears throat> reset the preview just like if it was a blank board okay so this is the this is the cut that I want here so that you know um, the, the you know the look that I want so that it, you know if I was painting it it would look something like this right um, 
Now I could reverse that uh, with an extra line. So if I got rid of this line here, let me open that back up. If I got rid of this line and just calculated that, then it's gonna create kind of the reverse effect. So uh, it would look like this, which I don't think looks as good. Okay, so I want it the other way. So this boundary is part of the design. So now I've got to, you know, I'm gonna be carving, you know, between the boundaries here of these things. Uh, and so I, I need like an island, uh, if you want, I need it to be protected. So I'm gonna offset this line right here. That's the outside, the most outside of this outward 0.125 just like we did before. And the same line, I'm gonna go 0.15. I need two of them, one at eighth of an inch, one at 0.15. Okay, so there's my two boundaries. My text, that's gonna get offset outward an eighth of an inch. And then my text again is gonna get offset outward 0.15. So <clears throat> these two vectors here for the progress bar, they need to be up on the, so if I turn off the lower third here for a minute, I need those vectors here on the top text layer and on the welded text layer, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and while I'm here, I'm gonna copy them to the top text layer, select them again, Weld a text layer. Now that see, I about I about screwed myself up again. I almost did it again. You guys didn't catch me that time. Sorry. Only one of the vectors, the inside vector, needs to get copied to the top text layer and the welded text layer. Just the inside vector. Not both of them. Not both. <clears throat> okay. Same thing with the transformation just the inside vector, just the inside offset, should I say, just the inside offset. Go to three dots. That gets copied over. I'm gonna hit group, G for group, uh, so I don't have to keep selecting them again. That gets copied over to the top text layer. And then also gets copied over to the welded text layer. So all that's done. That's what we did earlier. Okay. All right. We're going to come back and clean up all this middle stuff that doesn't belong. This is all trash from the offset. Trash. It's just the inside vectors. The far most inside. For the most part, the far most inside. Just the trash. Anything that's not the words or the outside boundaries. So that's done. So I should have, with my cleanup, on my top text layer, I should have border, total force, the inside boundary here. Get rid of that. The inside boundary here, get rid of, I had two of them. All right, and then the inside boundary for the text, done. Go into my top text tool path. <clears throat> right. Done. Okay, now, in my welded text layer, I should have my border, my welded text, my inside boundary for my textness, and the inside boundary of the dumbbell. So let's get that inside boundary and copy it over to the welded text layer. 
that's all the vectors I need for that. So, calculate that toolpath. Done. Preview those two layers. <laughs> Beautiful. Turn off the color. We don't want the color on here. Okay. All right. Now. All that looks good. All right. On my lower third level, I have a pocket cut. That pocket cut <clears throat> is starting at zero, cutting down an eighth of an inch with a quarter inch end mill. And it is going to be pocketing. It's going to be pocketing this inside boundary here. Okay. I got to fix that outside offset. There's something funky going on with it. Oh, I didn't have that when I created it. I didn't have those dumbbells selected. But uh, this inside offset, this eighth of an inch inside offset here, that's it's good still. Um, let me fix that so it doesn't confuse you guys really quickly. these dumbbells here. I need to just make a new offset 0.15. There we go. All right. So anyway, pocket cut inside vector here. Inside vector here inside vector on all of that. Wonderful. That should be my pocket cut. And that should remove all that material for that top eighth of an inch. Okay. Good. All that looks great. My actual lower third V carve toolpath should be the barbell here. The progress bar there. And the most outside boundary, that boundary there, that boundary there, and the most outside boundary on the text here. Make sure I've got it all selected all the way around. The furthest most offset outward. And if it doesn't clean up those letters, then I need to clean and make my offset even further outward, but Shouldn't, shouldn't need to. Starting at an eighth of an inch down, cutting another eighth of an inch from there. Calculate. Preview the visible toolpath. And so I need to clean up that outside area. It's not, it's still not cleaning it up. And for me, 
what that means is I need to go out a little bit further. So for this, I'm going to offset this outward another eighth of an inch, just the outside one this time, an eighth of an inch. My progress bar, eighth of an inch. My text outside, I'm just going to use the inside boundary. Okay, I have some overlaps here that I've got to clean up. So this boundary and this boundary, I need to weld together. Okay, so to make that one big boundary and might as well weld that together too. Okay, all right, let's do this one more time. V-carve toolpath. This time we're gonna use not that boundary, but the furthest one out. Not that boundary, but the furthest one out. Okay, make sure just the text and the major outside boundary is turned off. Okay. Calculate, got to get that bit. I got to let that bit go out further. Preview that visible toolpath. Clean that sheet up. There we go. Okay, so it cleans up that. Now, my eighth of an inch bit right here didn't fit very well to clean up around those letters, those lower thirds. I have a sixteenth of an inch in mill, so I'm going to add that in to that V carve toolpath. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to calculate with the sixteenth of an inch bit. So that it can come in and clean up. And you can see that this line right here is still remnants of not being out far enough, <laughs> right? So did not, the bit didn't get out far enough. If I were to fill in here, um, so you can see, it's just leaving a little bit of material out here. It's not cleaning it up well enough. And unfortunately, I don't have an allowance offset that I can use to say, hey, go past the line by this much. I don't have that option in the VCARF toolpath. So I need to offset out a little bit further on that vector. So I'm gonna take this vector and I'm just gonna offset, offset it outward just another 20 thousandths of an inch. So 0.03, we'll go 30 thousandths. Delete the original. There we go. All right. Weld that together. We're going to recreate this toolpath. Calculate. Shoo! Lord of mercy. The boundary offset just wasn't on that last one for the V-carve, just wasn't out far enough to let the bit get out there and clean up. You know, so now that remnants is gone. And because of that, I should not need, now I should not need that 16th of an inch bit. So I can take that 16th of an inch bit out of there, remove that. Should just be the eighth of an inch is all I need. Let's find out and let's make sure. So how I'm gonna make sure is I'm gonna reset the preview and preview all the tool paths. Stop. I'm gonna delete these two because they don't belong. Okay, preview all the tool paths. And I shouldn't need that 16th of an inch. 
um, by offsetting out that vector a little bit further. That was a pain in the ass, guys. Sorry about that. That was when you screw up once, it all just kind of comes downhill and it becomes convoluted. So try to, you know, weed through that video, that first part, you know, this first hour um, in 15 minutes. Try to weed through that the best that you can. Yeah, so uh, don't need the 16th of an inch bit in there. That cleans it up just enough for me. And therefore, um, you know, the uh, that will be the sign. It'll look good with some color in it and all that good jazz um, and stuff. So I'll be fine with that. All right. So that's going to be the sign. Need some color for some clarity. But that's the main one. Shoo, Lord of mercy. Save as. Okay. Main sign. All right. Let's do something a little bit easier. <clears throat> All right. Let's see here. Give me just a minute. All right. A little bit of spam inside the chat area. Sorry about that if y'all saw any of that. All right, now this next sign, very simple sign we're gonna do with this one. <laughs> Um, we're gonna we're gonna do uh, just a very simple uh, kind of raised letter sign and everything. So for this one, it's gonna be a little bit a uh, little bit smaller in size. I will go uh, probably 20 inches wide. Uh, I'll go probably about 11 and a quarter inches tall by three quarter, something like that. Let's see what we have for, let me see a bunch of you, are, uh, thank you, put the dumbbells in the progress bar. Yeah, I think that would be good the next time. Uh, what's the run time for everything Harvey asked on that other sign? Let's go back uh, really quickly. On that sign, based on my speeds and feeds, Harvey, based on my speeds and feeds and my router and all, about three hours and 32 minutes for that 24 by 16 sign, that stack text. Um, so basically, uh, the top text area, or the um, quarter inch end mill cut, let's say, bear with me a second. is going to take about an hour and 39 minutes. The eighth inch area is gonna take about 42 minutes. And then the V carve area is gonna take about an hour and 10 minutes. Okay. All right, so cool. So about three hours. Uh, close that. So 20 by 11 and a quarter by three quarters. This one, we're just gonna do a simple border. Uh, so for this, I want the width of my board. I want to find the center. So I'm gonna divide that by two and hit equals. Uh, the height of my board, I'm gonna divide that by two. H divided by two and hit equals. And I want, same thing, I want about a, uh, I'm gonna go three quarters of an inch. So for this, my I'm gonna subtract an inch and a half. 1.5 and on the height h minus 1.5 three quarters on each end equals all right cool all right i'm not going to do decorative corners just square corners on this one and our text okay we're going to go with one and a half inch tall text. Cool, cool. All right, focus. Let's see here. 
I want a nice Oswald Demi Bold there. Wonderful. Elevation. I want a left alignment. There we go. Dedication. Excuses. Cool beans. All right. I want to align that up and down on the material. I am, uh, that's good. I'll, when I get everything else drawn in here, I will get, uh, I'll get it all centered all at once, but that's what I want here. All right, this is gonna move over to the right just a little bit. I'm going to draw a rectangle here. And let's, I'm going to go into node editing mode and I'm going to turn this to an arc on this side, turn this to an arc on this side. Okay. And I want the, um, I want to, uh, on the text, I'm going to go with the same Oswald Demi Bold. This time the text is going to be about three quarters of an inch tall. And I'm going to go on. All right, I'm going to select the text and then this oval and I want to make sure that I am centered up and down. Not that way, goofball. Centered up and down. There we go. I'm going to draw a circle. I want the circle to be the same radius as this here, minus a slight offset. So let me pull this over to here. Close enough. And I want to back that off just a little bit. And bring this down just a little bit. There we go. All right. And I want to make this. Let's bring that in just a little. Okay. All right. I'm going to take this and. Let me bump that over just a little bit. There we go. All right, I'm gonna take this and I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm gonna copy it down, hold down that control key. One, two, and three. All right, on this last one, I want to change the text to off and I want to flip the things around so put this on this side and the circle on this side okay cool bean little toggle switches all right <clears throat> now if I wanted these to be all centered and everything I would group this together G for group Select that, group that together, select that, group that together, select that and group that together. I would take my text block here, I would right click and I would unbreak or break the text block into individual lines. So these are individual lines of text. And then I would take this group and I would align it with this text using the alignment tool up and down. So I would select this group and this text align up and down. 
this group and this text align up and down and this group and this text align up and down all right cool beans all right let's move that over just a little bit more all right and then over here um, I'm going to uh, open up a second window for a minute Go back to that main sign just for a second. I didn't mean to close the main sign. I was just going to create a different sheet, but go back to that main sign for a second. <clears throat> and in, let's see here. Let's go here. All right. I want to borrow this. I want to copy that vector. And I want to paste it in here. Okay, I need to make my sign a little bit bigger or my text and stuff a little bit smaller. I want my sign a little bit bigger. So let's go a little bit longer. Let's go 24. I don't need it to be that much longer. Let's go 22. All right, let's take my border and I'll resize the border in just a minute. Let's get everything centered. Okay, all right, on my border, you know, I want three quarters of an inch all the way around and everything. And so I'm just gonna redraw that border again because you know, I had to resize my board. So I'm simply just going to delete this. It's easier for me just to open up the rectangle tool and uh, to come back in here uh, and um, just get it laid out again really quickly. H divided by 2 equals and then W minus that inch and a half, you know, three quarters on each side. H minus inch and a half equals and just recreate that border just, you know, quickly. All right, so the sign here, I want to align to the center of the material. Okay, make sure I'm centered. And so that's gonna be sign number two. Okay, sign number two. All right, so let's create the tool pass for sign number two. Okay, sweat equity, that's a good sign. Um, uh, Sweat is fat crying. That's another sign as well. <laughs> All right, let's see here. We're going to go uh, V-carve tool path. Um, I got to decide if I want things just carved in. I think I'm just going to go just carved in. So uh, we're going to select all of this as it is. And zero start depth uh, on the flat depth. This is going to have a flat depth. The rest of this is not. So let me turn off these as two separate tool paths. We'll turn that off for now. We'll calculate this. Uh, oops, hold on. I don't want, I just said I didn't want a flat depth in there. Uh, turn off that flat depth and calculate that again. Okay, so it is it this does require a flat depth there. So since that's the case, I want the text by itself to be calculated. Okay, oh, I missed a word. Try that again. Calculate. All right, preview the visible toolpath. Okay, and then these items here are gonna be V-carved toolpath, but they will have a flat depth because right there is wanting to carve through the material. Uh, so we'll go an eighth of an inch flat depth. I will use an eighth of an inch tool uh, end mill for the clearance, just to kind of help me out with the clearance area and calculate that. 
eighth of an inch. Calculate. Okay, and then we will do a nice little border cut, uh, V uh, profile cut for the border. We'll go uh, 3 16 of an inch deep with a 60 degree V bit. On the line and calculate that. All right. Okay, so we'll, uh, you know, change up, get a different color, whatever color you want, who knows. Um, but uh, so that will be the second, simple second sign, right? Okay. Cool. All right, for this sign, as far as time and everything, about 43 minutes to knock it out because of the flat area here. Uh, we could probably reduce that uh, a little bit if we threw a quarter inch end mill into the mix. Um, but um, all in all, not bad. So that'll be sign number two. Okay. So file save as. And uh, we're just going to be, um, we'll call it switch it on. Okay. Save that one. All right. Okay. Third sign. We're going to add some a uh, little bit of flourish. So we'll close this one. Just this one's just going to be some uh, simple text. Uh, this one could be a bigger sign. Um, it could be you know uh, something. Right, so, but this is just gonna be all text and you know, uh, you can go with some flourishes and all. This one, I'm gonna go long and narrow. Uh, so I'm gonna go 11 and a quarter, and, but I'm gonna go 36 inches in length. Long and narrow, uh, three quarter inches thick. Okay, all right. Let's see here. So the first one, uh, let's go um, let's go four inch tall. Let's go five inches tall. And on this one, I want somewhat of a decorative text uh, for the larger text and then something basic for the smaller. So let's see here, what do I want? Um, let's see if I can find my, where are you hiding? Uh, not Harrington. This is where wordmark.it comes in wonderful, wordmark.it. Um, let me go back up to the top and let's see here. Get past all the vertical signs, this text. Any of the text, by the way, with the at sign in front of it, that's a vertical text, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, you know, it's carving straight up and down. Okay, so... For this, we'll try that. Let's see here. Yeah. All right, so I need to bring the size down a little bit. Let's go four inches. And Okay, that was that one. Strong. 
Okay. Let's get that centered. And I'm going to bring this up. Uh, no, I'm sorry. This is going to be centered. Uh, not yet. I'm going to bring it up just a little bit. I'll center it once I get the smaller text in. All right. And then in the smaller text, the smaller text, I'm just going to do a simple Arial uh, font. I think. Uh, let's see here. A simple Arial. Oh, tag them. Hold on. I mean, don't have your text selected when you do that. This is going to be about two inches tall. Uh, we're going to go Arial. Actually, I'm going to go Times New Roman uh, on this one. So we'll go Times New Roman. And um, okay, let's go one and a half inch tall on the text. Throw that right there. Now, I would like this to be centered on the this word here without the S, I'd like it to be centered there. So I'm gonna draw a rectangle to, uh, and my goal is that my rectangle just touch, um, you know, the outermost edge of the letter here and on this side. That's all I care about. And I can use that rectangle to align this lower text. So if I select this lower text first, that rectangle Last, I can use the alignment tool to align left to right to center it, right? And then I can delete that rectangle. So I'm just using that rectangle as an alignment tool. I could have drawn just a simple line as well too. So the line, um, you know, I could have drawn a line straight across to the furthest point of the letters. Uh, make sure it's a straight line. But... Um, and uh, I could have used that as well, too. But for me, it's just easy to draw a rectangle. All right. Now I want to take all of this and center it. And I'm going to take a rectangle. And I'm going to do a rectangle here. I'm going to hold down, I'm going to double click on that rectangle, hold down the control key and drag a copy down to here. Oh, hold on. Make sure you hold that uh, control key. All right, now I'm just going to stretch this out. Where is my copy, ladies and gentlemen? Hold on a second. All right. There we go. Okay, there's my copy. All right. So, when I'm dragging this down, don't let go of the control key until after you let go of your mouse. So, I kept letting go of the control key before the mouse and it was deleting it. Now, I'm going to take and just stretch this out to here. And then I'm going to bump it up just a little bit right there. Bring this down right there. All right. Now this whole thing is going to get centered onto the material. And the... Um, We're gonna do a little bit of an image trace. So we're gonna move this over. Okay. And for the uh, image, we're going to uh, give the gals some love on this sign. 
So we're going to import just a silhouette. Um, bah, 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 bah. Let me see where it where it went to. There it is. All right, we're going to zoom in. Open up the trace tool. I want to trace just this area here. Okay. All right, we're gonna go align up and down on the material. All right, now, I probably would like her to be somewhat raised instead of carved in and painted or whatever, but we'll see what it looks like uh, without a border around her, an offset, if you will. So let's do a V-carve toolpath. Very simple V-carve toolpath on the whole thing. Uh, we're gonna go V-carve. I like an eighth of an inch. That's kind of my go-to. Uh, we'll use a quarter inch end mill and a eighth inch end mill both for the clearance tool, since this is a good size project. And we're going to calculate this toolpath. 60 degree V-bit. Quarter inch and eighth inch end mill. Okay, preview the visible tool path. All right. Okay, now if I wanted that raised, you know, or opposite of this uh, of what it is here, then I could put a boundary around the entire sign or just an offset vector around the symbol over here on the left, the, uh, the female symbol over here on the left. Either one, uh, it just depends on if I want my text raised as well too, so that anytime you wanna keep create a reverse of your sign, this is getting carved in, let's turn the color off here. This is getting carved into the material, right? If I want it reversed and I want it pronounced and standing up, then I just create a boundary around it all. So if I did that, and this time I'm just gonna do the old school boundary method, I'm just gonna draw a rectangle um, around my board and I'm going to offset it inward three quarters of an inch. With square corners. Okay, and I'm going to take everything here and should be, I should be centered, I should be centered on the material. No, that's centered. All right, let me undo that. I like it where it is, but I wanna center it on this rectangle left to right. Whoa, wrong. Group together, let me group together my objects first here. So take all of these. Hit the G for group to group them all and then select that rectangle last. And I wanna align just to the center of that. That looks better. All right, so if I did something like this, I could come in here and you know select all of this and calculate that. And that'll give me the raised effect. Or I could just do an offset around the symbol on the left, either one, whichever, um, whichever looks best. But first of all, turn off, let's do that again. Turn off this outside vector or delete it altogether. You don't need it. There you go. 
All right, one more time. Let's do that one more time. Here she comes. Here comes. Okay, reset the preview. Preview uh, the visible tool pass. And okay, let's give that some color, right? Whichever one doesn't matter. Whichever way it looks best and all that. So that is sign number three. So save as. And we're going to do one more. And then we'll kind of leave it at that. So uh, this one we'll just call stronger. Now, you know, besides these, besides these, um, uh, besides, uh, you know, the signs I could do letters and words, you know, uh, um, and stuff and, uh, have them, you know, hung around and all that thing and all that stuff. Uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be signed. I could cut out letters and things, you know, it just all depends on what I want to do. I just want, I want some signs where you look around, you know, there's some motivation and all. All right. Um, let's see what's here. Um, my home gym is my shop. There you go, Chris. Uh, and nimbil, nimblity, uh, Brooks, what's nimble, nimblity? Um, I'm not sure. All right. All right. Now the last sign here, uh, we're going to close this out. This one's going to be kind of my favorite one. It's just a very simple silhouette one, but we're going to, this one's going to go big as far as it's going to be more than 11 and a quarter. I want to go probably I want to probably go really big with this one uh, to hang it on a main wall uh, it's gonna go 24 by uh, let's go 22 there you go 22 by 36 three quarters of an inch thick all right, so for this one, once again, I do want a border. I'm gonna do it kind of the way that I like to do it. I'm gonna go W divided by two equals, and that gives me my center point for the width. H divided by two, that gives me my center point for the height for my anchor point. I do want a one inch border all the way around this, so that's two inches from the whole sign, so I'm gonna go W minus two equals and H minus two equals and click create. Okay. So just a one inch frame around this actually, no, that's good. One inch frame is fine. One inch frame. Yeah. One inch frame will be fine. All right. Now for this one, uh, I'm going to go back to my other sign and there is a uh, vector that I want to use. here okay I'm gonna size this up Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, bear with me just a second. I want. Let me size it down just a little bit. Okay, that's good. All right, for the text, <clears throat> I want to go with, for the text, I would like to go with a kind of a uh, little bit of a, a scripty type, not script, not script, um, but something that has a little bit of curve to it, a little bit of, little bit of curl. 
Um, I'll tell you which one it is when I find it here. Uh, let's see. Gloss and Bloom. Golden Ranger. I think it's going to be the Golden Ranger, but let me see. Let me go back up here. No, here it is. Grand Avenue. That's what I'm looking for. Grand Adventure. It's Grand Adventure. Okay. Uh, all right. Here we go. Last sign. So, um, we're going to go here. All right. Life. No, hold on. I will know what font it is when I see it. Again, for those of you that are not familiar with it, Word Market is great for things like this. Wordmark.it. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, so Bernadette, Bernadette. All right, I want to go with a um, a two inch tall text, maybe two to one and three quarter inch tall text. I'll find out how once I have it in there. But uh, so life uh, doesn't have a remote remote control. Get up and change it yourself. All right, I'm gonna take this text block and I'm going to break it into individual lines. And I'm going to bring this over here. Let me see how I want the text to lay out. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, let's change this up a little bit. Let's go into this one and add the word change to the end of this line. Change. And then on this one, get rid of the word change. On this one up here, get rid of the word life. And then in a separate text box, add the word life by itself. Okay. All right, one more time. Let's move this over. I want the word life to be bigger. this down I'm just organizing the text oh, I can be happy with that that's fine all right let's select all of the text and weld it together uh, keep it if you want to keep your original on a different layer so if you want to change the font or something or replace it if you're happy with the font and the spelling and all that uh, because once you convert it, it's no longer a font, right? Uh, so just make sure you got all the spelling and everything correctly that you want. All right, so for this um, here, I'm debating on the border around here. I'm gonna, uh, I'll see how I want the border to look in just a minute um, because I may frame this just a little bit different, but this is going to be a raised sign and uh, it's just a silhouette. So let's move over and do a V-carve toolpath. This is going to 
Um, same for me, again, for me, my go-to is eighth inch, eighth inch, eighth inch. So we're gonna just call this, or we're not gonna call it anything, we're gonna calculate it. I'll name it life for this one. All right, this says I have some overlaps or intersections and stuff. So I am gonna go to the vector validator and I'm gonna check and see where the issues lie so that I can uh, fix them. And uh, there's gonna be uh, probably right here in this area here. Um, so basically just those little figure eight pixels, right? So I can go ahead and clean that up. And any of these square pixels I can actually get rid of, they're trash. Okay, so if they're square, they're generally just trash pixels, no place needed. Okay, let's try that again. Calculate. We've got a uh, 60 degree V bit for this. I'm using, as kind of my go-to bit, I'm using a quarter inch and an eighth inch end mill to kind of clear things out. Um, the calculation is thinking on this one, so there might be some additional issues. We'll find out here in a second. thinking really hard on this one so there we go pretty good might be just because it was just a it was uh at night so that quarter inch end mill is going to do a majority of the work got a little rock climber there and the only thing that i would probably debate on is if i want that frame border around it. If I did, I would want to make it probably pretty much consistent in uh, size or if I want this to be part of the frame. I think I would like to take on the extra work. So this is going to be our final step here. I'd like to take on the extra work and make it part of the frame um, and do some trimming and everything to make it part of the border if you will, right? And so basically to make it part of the border, this lower line here, all the way you know to here, uh, is gonna be trimmed away, right? It's gonna be the border. But I wanna size it up to the, the appropriate size first. So let me grab my rock climber. Let's turn off the text. I don't want the text selected in all this. So make sure I have none of the text selected, none of the vectors in the text. Remember, it's all broken up. It's all broken up because I converted it to curves. I welded it all together. So when you're selecting and deselecting things, you might want to group them back together again to make it easier to select. That way you don't have to, you know, deal with accidentally having a vector selected that, you know, isn't. Now, what I'd like to do with this is I want to size this up. Um, let's turn off the border. I want to size this up and basically I'm going to just uh, grab it right where it is. I'm going to hold down my control key. Uh, I'm sorry, my shift key. And I'm just going to size it up so it pretty much overlaps the original border. Okay. All the way around. right and then basically all I'm gonna do is on my trimming I'm going to trim away the uh, frame here to make this all part of the border all part of the wood you know and so as you know as it comes around and everything all of these new things here uh, I'll probably take this and move it up just so 
just so it's in there. It's probably part of a tree or a bush or something like that, whatever. Um, but uh, anything below that border, uh, we're going to, it's all now going to be, you know, part of, of that border. So uh, we basically just uh, trim this. Stand by. Save early, save often, because it might freeze up like it did. I just froze it up. I'm going to save this real quick. File, save as. And I'm just going to call this one life. All right, so basically think of this uh, outline of the climber here now being the border right so this is the frame you know my square frame now this is the frame this is what the shape this is all going to be wood here it's only going to be carved inside of this area around the trees and stuff so that is what i want um you know i'm creating a boundary so this border here is going to go up and around the trees now so all of this lower stuff here this gets trimmed away this lower here down here gets trimmed away and the upper so we'll do the bottom one first and then the upper that's now kind of a whole piece so this is all the wood now right so come around that's going to be trash we'll delete that in a minute that square pixel there but that overlap trim it away and then this upper part here I'm going to close the tool for a minute so I can select that trash. Might as well do it while I'm here. And come on up and around the corner. All right, with the scissors. That border, right, out here. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Give it a second to think. Give it a second to think there we go and then that line there as well okay and this stuff here uh, i'll get rid of the square one i'll leave that one i'll leave that. that's no big deal all right, now this, now my border continues around and connects back over here. So basically the trees and everything are going to be part of the frame, if you will. You know, they're going to be on the outside of the frame. So make sure that I have uh, no open vectors. So let's right click and select all open vectors. There are none in the design. And now I can go in and re-carve this sign again. Okay, so I just blended uh, the scene into the border, if you will. Uh, so you'll see here in just a moment. Uh, use the Loki Cola font, right? That's probably a good font too. Yeah, Loki Cola is a good one. Do I have Loki Cola? I might have Loki Cola. We'll see when it's finished calculating. And... Uh, Let's see here. All right. Obstacles are what you see when you take your eyes off your goals. Take your eye off your goal. All right, let's reset the preview. Preview the visible toolpath. Sweat is fat crying. That's my favorite one. <laughs> All right. Okay. So um, that will be that sign. That's going to be the big piece of wall art. You know, uh, probably had that near the uh, wall climbing station or something, you know, whatever, rock climbing station, but uh, rock wall. And uh, yeah, so that's that. 
All right, so save the changes to that. Got our three tool paths, and that would be kind of the main one. Um, yeah, man. All right, so we've done some trimming. We've done some uh, working with node editing. We've done some stack text where we had to make some changes and corrections on that one. But uh, we've drawn some things and uh, you know, uh, hopefully you've got something out of this, um, out of this, hopefully you learned something. And uh, that is pretty much uh, it. So hopefully you've got something uh, useful and I've got some a start of many of my wall art signs. Um, I think what I'm gonna do uh, for the next one, I think I'm gonna take and create an arc. I think for the next one, I'm gonna create an arc. I'm gonna offset that arc outward by one inch. I'm going to join both of those ends together with a straight line to close it off. I'm going to center it onto the material. I'm going to take my rectangles here as I did before. I'm going to take one, hold down that control key, two, three, four. I'm gonna come in and hold the shift key down this time and size that down just a little bit. Next one, size that down just a little more. Next one, size that down just a little bit. I'm gonna take those, I'll group them, uh, I'm gonna space them apart first. So let's, uh, Taken. I'm actually going to just use my arrow keys this time. So bump that over once, uh, twice, three times a lady, once, twice, once, and once for that. That'll give me good spacing. Good. All right. Let's take those. I'm going to group those together. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to rotate them slightly. So I'm going to use the Zero key, uh, I'll freehand rotate them a bit, but let's uh, freehand rotate that to right about there. Let's size them up a little bit. Now, I wanna rotate, I'll, basically what I'm gonna do is I want them to be somewhat in line, right? So I'm gonna snap to this corner right here. I'm gonna take the rotation tool and come over to this corner, the pivot, pivot point. And then I'm going to rotate off that pivot point to line up with that other line there. Okay, cool. So now that I'm in line, I'm just going to use my arrow keys on my space bar to kind of put a little space right there. That's good. And then I'm going to mirror that over to the other side. Okay, awesome. Blossom. We're going to go ahead and size that, select it, I'm gonna size it down. I'm gonna offset that whole thing outward by about an eighth of an inch, not 125, uh, 0.125, just to give me that offset there. And let's see, that'll carve in between there, that's good. Um, I am going, this one's going to be a little bit, uh, let's center this onto the material. There we go. All right. This one's going to be a little bit more direct, uh, to, um, in its verbiage, should I say, uh, where, um, it's going to be a little bit more direct. 
<laughs> uh, I was going to say something like shut up and lift. Or, no, that's too, I, I want my gym to be nice. <laughs> so, uh, until it's not time to not be nice. So, let's hear. We'll be nice. Hold on. Let's, uh, all right, here, we'll do something different. Now, we won't do shut up and lift. All right, all right, last, this is the very last sign. Uh, so, um, don't, I want, I'm just going to go with straight on square text. Now, someone said, what was the font that someone mentioned? Loki Cola. Let me see if I have Loki Cola. L. Do I have Loki Cola? Everybody should have Loki Cola in their library. I don't have Loki Cola. Um, but that might be a cool one to get. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go old school. Not old school, but like school. A school text, more of a square font. Um, kind of a university type thing, blah, 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 whatever you want to call it. And um, where is it at? Yeah, sports world. There you go. We're just going to go kind of sports world on this one. Okay. All right. Last sign. This is the last one, okay? So don't stop. And what I want, yeah, all capital because it's all in that university text. All right. Don't stop. And then in another line underneath. Uh, I'm going to change up the font just a little. Ah, you son of a gun. Hold on. Make sure you're not on that. Let's try that again. Don't stop. Okay, there we go. Click off that for a minute. Over here. Get over there. Um, and let's go uh, all caps again. Uh I don't want it on Sports World this time. I just want a simple Arial, something square. Let me grab Arial real quick. Arial, there we go. All right. When you are or your, you are, sounds good. And then go back. I'll resize everything in just a minute. I want to go back to the school text or sports world and tired. Okay. And then I want to um, uh, stop, switch off that, go back to Arial. Uh, this is all going to be all capital letters. Okay. When you are and then get off that and go back to the sports world text and done okay let's get this laid out so use my arrow keys on my keyboard to help me lay things out I want to get this centered on the material not that way Laney Left to right, centered. I want it where it is, but left to right. And I want this text smaller. There we go. And I want these two texts aligned center of each other. So I'm going to select this and this last, the big text last, and I'm going to align left to right. Perfect. And then I'm just going to use my down arrow key to put some spaces in between that lines. Okay. Perfect. And then I want aligned center to this, so align left to right. And again, I'm going to put some space in between. All right, cool beans. All right, let's go ahead and grab this. I'm just going to move this up for a moment. Might have went a little much on the bend of my bar, but I'm actually going to lower the whole bar down a little bit right here so I can give myself some room. Okay, I'm going to stretch some things out. All right, let's stretch this out a bit. Okay, now let's get the word stop centered left to right. Let's get done out of the way for a minute. Let's get this over here. 
size that down. Now I kind of want to be somewhat consistent on the text height here uh, and stuff, uh, but I know I've stretched it out and all. Uh, so probably before I do all my stretching and stuff, I'd probably, uh, um, you know, uh, check my text height and see what, you know, how they are, how it is. So if I look at this height here, um, it's 1.3741. Uh, and so if I change this height, 1.3741, right, you know, and then everything is stretched out, right? But I don't know. Let's see here. Grab this and that and align it to the center. Oh, hold on. Wrong button. Align it to the center left to right there. And... Let's get this aligned left to right. Perfect. All right. I want, when you're done, to come down just a little bit lower. I want stop to be a little bit bigger. So I'm actually going to stretch this out a little bit. Okay. This is the, the, this is the main message down here. So I want it to be a little bit bigger. All right. Bring this down there. And done I want to be bigger so I'm going to stretch that out okay all right good okay last sign let's go ahead and carve it up v carve tool path um yes I'm going to do a flat depth uh 60 degree v bit eighth inch and quarter inch end mill to help me out with that this is just going to be uh, simple last minute throwaway sign, not throwaway sign, but uh, you know, hang it on the wall. All right, now I'd like the barbell to look a little bit more raw, you know. So, my offset, my offset line, I want that border, I want that border to be a little bit more stand out ish. So, this offset here that I went an eighth of an inch, I'm gonna double that. So, let's double that up offset outward uh, I'm actually gonna go let's go three eighths that might be too much let me see here no nah, I think that'll be all right let's go ahead and uh, recarve this with that new offset calculate and Reset, preview the visible toolpath. That just gives it a little bit more, gives that border around it just a little bit more meat so it kind of matches and everything. And let's give it, uh, you know, um, whatever, you know, color and all. There you go. All right, everybody. Um, yep. Uh, never lower the bar. There you go, Cynthia. Cynthia's got it. There you go. That's a good one. Never lower the bar, right? All right, so that is our sign. So a lot of different things, right? You know, um, you saw how, you know, in some cases, the graphic that I needed here, the little barbells, it was easy to draw out, just a bunch of rectangles. When I look at shapes and things, uh, when I look at designs and stuff uh, and, and, and all, uh, I look at what shape does it remind me of? And in this case, it's a rectangle, right? Uh, it just happens to have an arch because the barbell's bent, you know, because all the weight hanging on it and all that stuff, but um, still starts off as a rectangle, right? So very easy to kind of draw that. I didn't have to trace the image uh, and stuff to create that, uh, you know, that uh, simple thing. Um, you know, sometimes uh, when it comes to graphics and stuff, um, let's uh, create another layer here. You, you might not, you know, you might be able to use some elements and add your own. So what I mean by that is just really quickly, um, let me go to uh, layer one here and let me grab this arm right here and copy this. Uh, go back here. I've got this arm. Let's paste it in and let's get it centered, right? And uh, let's make it bigger. And I'm going to take a circle 
Okay, let's draw a circle here and let's get uh, let's get a circle drawn. Let's go about like um that looks good. All right, let's take this and get it centered on the board. So I'm using one graphic that I've traced, you know, and I want to create something completely different. I want to take and uh, I'm going to rotate this, you know, down. Let's go about like that, All right? And um, let's take my scissors on this. And on the scissors, uh, first of all, I'm going to take the arm and let's ungroup. If, it, if any part of it is grouped together, I want to ungroup it into individual vectors and all. But I'm going to take my scissors and let's trim away this circle here. Okay. And then trim away any part of the arm. Oops. That was too much. Uh, let's go back in here. And... Let's see that looks good. I want, let's see, let's get rid of that. Oops, hold on. Join together, you goober. Oh no, I gotta get it to join together. You're all one. All for one and one for all. that let me see my scissors should trim it should trim that why hey why are you getting rid of that all right i gotta go into node editing on this one sometimes it's not gonna play nice oh that's why it's not trimming i don't need to go into node editing this line doesn't intersect so let's go into node editing on that let's pull that line up it just didn't intersect and it was like hey all right, that should be good. So now let's go back into our scissor tool and we should be able to trim that away. Okay. And if I wanted to keep the shoulder area, this this right here, I can go into node editing and I can cut the vector here. Cut. Cut the vector down here. Let's see, cut that and that, and one more, cut the vector there and down here. Okay, now I can come in and get rid of, let's take the scissors, trim away this, trim away that, take my, because I have an open vector here, right, I've got two open vectors, um, let's use, uh, let's join with a straight line on that one join with a straight line on this one that'll be fine all right so with this you know i could come in and uh, i'd probably do another offset but let's just do a simple v carve and calculate oh got an open vector let's find them and join them so where's my other open vector so select all open vectors right here so right there i just got to trim away this little nub there we go perfect okay select calculate reset preview the visible toolpath and so um you know, I might, you know, depending on, you know, graphics or logos or this or that, I may have some shapes that I can draw in, some shapes I can make my own, uh, some graphics I can, you know, I would use, you know, I would need, you know, to probably trace. I could do a combination of my own and a tracing and stuff. So whatever you need, make it happen, you know, figure out what it, what visit, you know, what they, uh, uh, what it is that you want to see uh, and stuff and uh, uh, to make happen. Um, with something like this, there would probably be a, another shape that kind of runs. 
if I were to kind of finish this off, it would be rotated a little bit. So 45 degrees, it would probably come right in here. Uh, it would be trimmed right there. And there'd be some text or something right here, uh, you know, with, you know, the word Jim or whatever, or I don't know, whatever, you know, you're just creating your own graphics and all. So draw your own, make your own, whatever it works for you, whatever helps trace what you need to trace. In this case, all I needed to do was be able to create the dumbbell uh, and then the rest of it was text, right? So hope you all enjoyed this. Hope you got some uh, good uh, information out of it. And uh, yeah, so we made, what do we make? Four signs, all right? So this one I'll name, uh, file save as, I'll name it as don't stop, don't stop and so what do I got here if I um, file save as what do I got going on here I've got uh, don't stop life the main sign stronger and switch it on one two three four five right five simple signs working our way towards a goal of many more and just little things and I always I like looking up, you know, and seeing things online that inspire me and, um, you know, um, you know, uh, <laughs> I'll never break up with my gym. It just seems to work out <laughs> anyhow, but, uh, you know, signs that might, uh, you know, and, um, interest me or whatever and uh, see what I can do and what I can make but all in all hopefully you got something out of it and uh, I appreciate your time tonight ladies and gentlemen we're gonna call it an evening uh, and um, uh, Rodney Robert says that would look cool stacked on the barbell sign on the barbells sign um, yeah uh, The, uh, yeah, you're if you're talking about that arm and flex and all that, right. Yeah, uh, somehow stacked or whatever with the, uh, with the, the uh, barbell. Uh, now, I could even, just a real quick, here's a last little, little design change um, on this. Uh, let me move the text out of the way for a minute. Let's take the text, move that over there. Take this text, move over here. I could have, if I had the arm, right? Let's go back over here and grab this arm. Copy. Go back over here, paste. All right, let's size this up. Okay. Let's take that. Imagine if that was his shoulders and his neck right there. Let's mirror that to the other side. Okay. Let's take that all and size it down. And, um, you know, let's V carve that, see what that would look like. Uh, calculate. Reset the preview, preview the visible toolpath. Right. Uh, I could tie all of that in together. I just wanted to see what it looked like initially. All right. So I could take this now and let's size things up more appropriately. So all of this, size that up just a little bit more. Hold on the shift key. Size it up just a little bit more. Not much. There. Um, I could rotate this slightly. Okay. Delete this one since I have this one kind of rotated. Uh, mirror that over. Mirror this one over. 
and let's do some welding. Now, on the welding, I'm simply going to uh, ungroup this arm, ungroup this arm. I'm gonna select the outside boundary here and the outside boundary on this, and I'm gonna weld it together, okay? So it just makes it kind of one piece, all right? And let's go back into that V-carve toolpath and see what that looks like now that it's all blended, all right? Might look goofy, but hey, you know, you never know. Preview the visible toolpath and all that jazz. There you go, all right? So uh, let's throw the text in there uh, for the final step. Take this and let's move this back into place. Get it aligned left to right. Take this, get it back into place. Um, let's, let's take our barbell guy here and let's size him up a little bit. Let's take the word stop and bring it down just a little. All right, let's get all this centered left to right. Bring that up. Bring this down. And recarve. that entire sign, right? So calculate the toolpath. And it's, I don't know, uh, it's goofy, but uh, preview it. And, you know, just gives it a, another element, right? So anyhow, um, <laughs> Pablo, how do you get your bicep into the screen that small? But uh, so the, um, right? So it just adds another little, I don't know, <laughs> masculine thing to do it, I don't know. But uh, that, you know, just uh, trimming, blending. Uh, you know, we drew the dumbbell, we, had, we created an offset around the dumbbell. I made the offset three eighths of an inch so it gave it a nice thick border, you know, around it and stuff. So it kind of matches the thickness of the text you know, kind of gives it that same, you know, look and everything. And then we took this bicep that I had, you know, this vector of this bicep, you know, flexing and brought it in, had it rotated it slightly. So it kind of somewhat makes sense, you know, like if they imagine if that was the torso of us, you know, of a human, a human torso, you know, where it's the shoulders coming into the arms and stuff. And, um, then the, uh, trim, weld, whatever it is that you need to do to make it happen, and you go there, right? So um, I hope you enjoyed everything. Uh, I really, uh, really think it's a, uh, a good class. Uh, I think there was a lot of stuff that we covered in sign. Even the screw up in the front at the beginning, even the screw up on the, on the uh, vectors, on the layers and all, it kind of made it a little bit confusing, you know, for you guys watching like, okay, what, what, what just happened, you know, and what's he, you know, what's he doing? But you can go back and review that and you can see that we, we had to take some steps. We had to go back and fix the mistake. You know, we were using the wrong, I was using the wrong offset. I had both offsets, you know, on the top text layer and the weld text layer when I only needed one. I didn't need both of those vectors there and that screwed everything up from the get go but we recovered, right? So learning about recovering and uh, and everything and just kind of just taking that step back and then stepping forward incremental until you get what you want. The text, that little lip that it was leaving around that transformation in progress and that progress bar, it meant my offsets just weren't out far enough so that when it was doing that final carve on that lower third that it wasn't, the bit couldn't get out there to clean all that up. So I just had to make the offsets a little bit bigger. And so you got to see all that. All right. Um, hopefully, uh, it uh, is uh, you know useful to you. And so, like with me and the sign, that could almost be me and the sign, right? I'm just kidding. All right, everybody. 
Until next time, thank you. I appreciate each and every one of you. You have a wonderful night. Enjoy the rest of your week. Um, and uh, we will see you next Tuesday. All right now. See ya.